Hello everyone, Mario here again. Um, before we start this show off this week, I wanted to do a little bit of pre-show housekeeping that I kind of dropped the ball on last week. Um, we hosted a giveaway for 100 episodes and I picked a winner but forgot to announce the winner. So congratulations to the winner of our Funko Pop keychain prize pack that we, we put up for giveaway, Jen Brandt. I will be contacting you via Twitter DM, I believe is how you sent us your submission. So I'll send you a message um, and you can send over your information and we will get those over to you. So thanks again to everyone that entered and congratulations, Jen. Give me a little intro there, Gomer. You're listening to episode 106 of the Station 71 podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I'm joined by my co-hosts, Beth and Brian. So we've got some interesting stuff happening in Disney this week. Uh, First thing on our news topics is that the Christmas decorations um, have arrived on Pandora I know we kind of briefly touched on this when they announced that they were going to be doing this, um, but they've added Christmas decorations to Pandora just to give it a little bit more of a seasonal feel, and I am all here for it. I think these look awesome. Yeah, I love Mm -hmm. these. Yeah. They're subtle enough that they don't like, they don't look so out of place, but you can definitely tell that it's Christmas. Yeah. I like how well it fits the whole theming of the land with the cords and the Mm -hmm. like wooden carvings and stuff like that. It's really cool. Yeah. I am really interested to see when, uh, Joe Rody posts his Instagram thing with, uh, a description of where they came up with all of those unique carvings. (laughs) Yeah, that's something I I want more info on. Like, they should actually sell those little wood carvings, because they're really cool. Yeah, I would buy them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So, next news topic we've got this week is that a new exhibit has opened up at the Morocco Pavilion. The Race Against the Sun exhibit has opened, and... It looks like this is a a nice new interactive um, immersive exhibit to draw guests in. I don't even know if I read what this was. I am so sorry. I'm like really off of my game tonight, guys. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm assuming this is where the like one about their accessories and adornments used to be. It looks like the same space, so it looks like they've yeah it does completely changed it, which is good. I I feel like it's good that they are making the effort to change these out from time to time because I feel like the one specifically in the Japan Pavilion has been the same one forever, and I'm just yeah. like waiting for new things. Yeah. yeah, I'm really surprised that they don't change these out more often than they do. I mean, this would be an easy way to just kind of I mean. It, you know that they're not dumping a whole lot of money into these, but it's cool just to get, you know, different tastes of the culture yeah. through these little exhibits. And and it's a nice break from the sun. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've gone in these little exhibits just as like a break and then just ended up looking around forever and being like, wow, this is really cool. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like you said, it's a nice break from the like the regular stuff that you would be doing so having a new pavilion in there it might not be a draw to bring someone in on a vacation but at the same time like if i see that morocco's gotten a new exhibit like yeah i'm gonna stop in there that's awesome yeah (laughs) i'm uh, intrigued by this new snack though that they have so the whole point of the exhibit is about the racing that they do Mm -hmm. And the snack is supposed to be this, like, energy-packed thing that they eat during races to give them, you know, energy and 
whatever, and it's looks like it's almonds and sesame seeds, some sort of paste <laughs> in a ball. I have no idea. It, it looks like peanut butter with sesame seeds on the outside. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it looks kind of good. Like, I would try it, but it's weird. But I like it <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> All about the weird desserts. Yeah. I like trying weird food, so I would give it a shot. <laughs> And the last news topic that we've got going this week is that some construction walls have started to come up around Mission Space um, for a possible entrance to Space 220. Very excited about this one. This is going to be something that I, I definitely look forward to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the concept art and all the announcements they made on this is making it look really, really cool. And I'm, like, not even mad that they started to put construction walls near Mission Space. Like, it's going to look so cool when it's done. I think that having it be a part of that area is such a good call. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I'm kind of hoping this is going to do is drive continued updates to Mission Space. Yeah. Because now I feel like it's not just a standalone attraction anymore now you're kind of committing you know a pavilion and now this attached restaurant to it so i'm, I'm really hoping they keep up with it okay but counterpoint uh the seas with nemo and friends is attached to a restaurant as well <laughs> yeah but you That's know you don't point. have to ride the ride to get <laughs> in right. there right all right <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's been three weeks in a row. We can't keep beating Mario after this. Oh. Yeah, I see how it is. I'm never going to live that one down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this week we kind of, oh, before we dive into our topic, let's look at some of this housekeeping stuff that we've got going on in here. Um, first things first, I know we've mentioned this a couple times, but we should probably plug our Patreon. We've just started it. Um, a couple weeks ago, if you want to get some extra content and support the show, basically this is the way to do it. Um, you just go to patreon.com backslash station 71 podcast, where you can join one of the tiers, which each have different like content offerings. Um, it's a good way to support the show. Like I said, and it, it basically helps keep the lights on here for us. Um, yeah super exciting and we're we're grateful for anything that you guys throw away by no means is this an obligation either um we're never going to lock anything mm -hmm. that we have previously done behind a paywall i want to throw that out there because i hate when shows do that yeah for sure it's just a, a nice way to throw us a few bucks and you can hear our like unfiltered pre-show and post-show ramblings and inside jokes and stuff like that yeah <laughs> bloopers and That's you can my have fave. a newfound appreciation for all the work that mario does <laughs> to make us not sound awful week to week uh we've gotten a lot better i will say that when we first started it was like we would record a solid hour and a half and i would edit it down to like 45 minutes yeah. now it's like we record an hour and a half and i'm like how do i keep this under an hour <laughs> oh. progress um yeah but the other thing was um, we posted a post on Facebook about Disney Plus this week and our friend Chant wanted to know what our top five least favorite animated films were. Well, just to clarify, <laughs> he actually asked that because of the Chicken Little post because ah, he said okay. that was in his top five least favorite animated Disney films. So he wanted to know what ours were. I absolutely agree with that. Chicken Little is definitely in my top five least favorite. It's definitely not in my top five. Did you guys actually make a list or were you just kind of going to wing it? Uh, I don't have a list, but I can definitely make one. I'm a winging it. <laughs> okay, well, I made a list, but I can pretend to wing it if that makes you guys feel better. <laughs> no, go ahead. Give us our list. You deserve to be prepared. Okay, well, should I stop? I'll start with my... Five, I guess. My least, my sure. best least favorite. I don't know how to. <laughs> um, I put number five as Dumbo. And I feel like that's probably going to come as a shock to a lot of people. But my reasoning is because it's really sad for most of it. And then it's really scary when Pink Elephants on Parade comes on. And then it like is over, basically. 
And I just feel like that was traumatizing <laughs> as a child. Yeah, Dumbo has some weird uh, tonal That's issues. For sure. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it was. I just was disturbed by it. No, I went. I went back and watched it when we did our episode on the you know the different eras of Disney animation, and that was one that I chose. And I hadn't watched it probably since I was a little kid. And yeah, when I rewatched it, I was just, I don't know. There's there's almost no substance to the movie i feel like which is very Mm -hmm. you know that that's odd for a disney animated film it just it honestly if it didn't have it felt thrown together it really did and it's like it aside from knowing that it's a disney film just because of how like you know ingrained into like the parks and you know everybody knows dumbo and everything like if you just took this in a vacuum and watched it like i don't think it would feel like a disney film i would not think of it as a disney film yeah so my number four is pinocchio again similar reasoning it's terrifying but my friend shane he doesn't listen to this podcast but i must throw him a shout out anyway he has this theory of what happens to the girls if the boys get turned into donkeys? Like, you notice that there's no gr- little girls in the film? I have not noticed that until <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, he has this, like, weird conspiracy theory of, like, what could be happening. And it's, like, even more terrifying than turning into a donkey, to be honest. But just thinking about it, it's just like, yeah, that's pretty creepy movie, you know? All these kids want to do is, like, go and have fun. And, uh... <laughs> They get turned into donkeys. It's, I don't know, uncomfortable to say the least. <laughs> For my number three, I put Tarzan and Jane, which I don't know if you guys have seen that. It was a straight to home video sequel to Tarzan. And it's just. I have not. Yeah, it's just very, in my opinion, very poorly put together. It's basically like three, I think, three different stories that they are like flashbacks. Basically, Jane is like trying to think of a anniversary present for Tarzan or something. So she's asking all this advice from people and the animals and stuff. And they're like, oh, why don't you do this? And they're like, oh, no, that's not a good idea because dot, dot, dot. And then there's a flashback about why that's a terrible idea. And they just <laughs> do that three times. And then it it's like... Oh, in the end, it all turned out that Tarzan was throwing Jane a big surprise party, and they were just distracting her the whole time. Wow, that sounds like a very forced sequel. Yes, yeah, very, very forced. Um, my number two, of course, can't make a top five worst Disney animated films without Home on the Range, and uh, we've... I think talked pretty at length about that. So I don't need, I don't think I need to go any further, but, uh, my number one is actually Pocahontas Two: journey to a new world because it's whitewashed garbage and she doesn't get with John spoiler alert. She does not get with John Smith at the end. Why did you even make a sequel? (laughs) That is like, that movie is horrible. It's infuriating. I don't care about John Rolfe. I wanted her to be with John Smith. Everybody did. We were rooting for you. <laughs> oh, I think if I had to like cobble a top five worst animated movies together, I would probably say in no particular order, because I think all of these are pretty bad. Um, Chicken Little, Home on the Range, Brother Bear, Hunchback 2 and mm. Mm, I need one more that I can't think of it off the top of my head. Fox and the uh, Hound 2. Meet the Robinsons. Oh, I was going to say that actually. That's oh God, that's a pretty good one. These films do not belong <laughs> on this list. Meet the Robinsons and Chicken Little. Uh, See, I don't know. I, I don't know how fair it is to throw like the The animation Disney. style is gross, I, okay, I will so, admit. I don't like the animation style in that era of Disney, but the stories are really good, I thought, anyway. I thought of another one that I can I can sub in there, and I don't know if this is going to be any better, but I am not a big fan of Bolt at all. <gasps> oh my god, I love um, Bolt! <laughs> I See, it's 
Bolts and Meet the Robinsons are kind of like at that could be better, could be like they don't have to be on this list list. Um, but I don't think I've ever sat down and watched either of them all the way through because every time they're on, I fall asleep. Oh my gosh. I love Bolt. I just, I don't know. I'm a big fan of him. Like Mittens, the cat, like teaching him how to be a dog is so cute. Like teaching him how to be like a real dog. I don't know. That, that movie tugs at my heartstrings. (laughs) It is weird that it's John Travolta though. The voice of Bolt. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I, f- I always forget that, and then I get uncomfortable when I think about it, so I try not to. <laughs> Did we miss any of your least favorites, Brian? I think we hit pretty much any that I would throw on a list without going into, like, deep cut straight to VHS Disney movies back in the day. Word. So, before we, we go into our, our main topic here, I want to pitch an idea to you guys that I kind of threw in our Discord earlier last night, or late last night. Um, so, Beth mentioned wanting to do a decom marathon, mm-hmm. and I threw out the idea of maybe doing a movie club like a book club but each week Ooh. we discuss a movie that is on disney plus um i was thinking maybe we could make like a channel in our discord and we could just have like a a watch this movie this week and then we'll all come back and discuss it with everybody that's there kind of thing i think that might be fun yeah, yeah i like that'd be that a lot of fun cool okay well we'll set that up in our discord if you want to um come talk to us about some disney movies when disney plus comes out i think this is an idea that we could definitely work on um yeah the link to that set up a bitly link for that let me grab that before we jump off of this while you're doing that i want to just throw this out there to anybody listening i'm not sure when this episode is going to come out but i'm thinking this decom marathon that i'm having is going to last like a whole week because i realize there's a lot (laughs) that i really want to watch and i can't watch them all in one day so my goal is to make all these decom themed snacks. Like think little kid's birthday party almost, but decom themed. And if you guys have any ideas, please send them my way cuz I want it to be like a thing. I'm going to make a nice little spread. <laughs> so the link to our Discord is um bit.ly/s71chat. You can go there. If you can't find it, um, you can also go to our website, and there is a link up top for our Discord chat. So be sure to let us know what kind of decom-themed snacks Beth should make, and uh, join in our Disney movie club that we're going to start. This is going to be a fun little ride, I think. Yeah. So for our main topic this week, since we're a little bit... Uh, we That went a little bit longer than <laughs> anticipated. We might have to break this up into like a couple weeks. Um but we've decided to come back to a topic that we've done a couple times with the other parks and we're going to do a in-depth tour of world showcase. So do we want to start this with the great debate of which way do we go? Yes, definitely. There's one correct answer. So I put up a Twitter poll I was just about to say, I think you put that up because I did. (laughs) Yes. So the question was, where do you typically start in World Showcase in Mexico, Canada, and International Gateway? Uh, The answers were very predictable, if I do say so myself. Uh, 80% Mexico as of the time that we're recording, 13% Canada, and 7% International Gateway. But what what I thought was really interesting was we had one person comment, Brian, on Twitter, not to Brian, a guy named Brian, uh, (laughs) that he takes the friendship boat straight from like World Showplace to Morocco. And that's where he starts because he gets tired halfway through and it's just like says he ends up falling asleep at the American Adventure. I thought that was really interesting (laughs) because that concept didn't even cross my mind, really. Hmm. That is interesting. <laughs> I, I honestly forgot that the friendship boats were a thing. Right? Uh, I feel like 
they used to run a lot more than they they do now because mm-hmm. I remember seeing them all the time, and now it's like, oh, yeah, there's a boat, or maybe I just don't notice them <laughs> as much. <laughs> so, what so, do you guys do? The only Mexico I, every single time. Yep, that's the only answer I think. Um, <laughs> unless you're coming in from International Gateway, which then that's a whole separate can of worms that we can not open up. I know. I wonder which of these 7% are lucky enough to actually be staying at one of the uh, Epcot resorts and walking to Epcot. Because that's a dream dream of mine. Um, I will say um, two weekends ago when we went to Food and Wine, we stayed at the Swan. And even though the Swan isn't super close to where the International Gateway entrance is, it is... So extremely convenient being mm-hmm. able to walk into it. Yeah, I've done like, t- I've like taken a Uber or driven to Boardwalk or taken a bus or whatever to Boardwalk and then gone around those little restaurants or bars or whatever and walked to Epcot and just thought about, oh man, how nice would it be to just, at the end of the day, a long day of drinking at Epcot, to just walk back to my hotel because I'm rich and can spend $600 a night. <laughs> <laughs> that same thought crossed my mind the last time we were down there. We went to Beaches and Cream for lunch one day, and walking out of the International Gateway, I was like, oh, this is a nice little walk. And then walking back from lunch, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the best walk into any Disney park I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. There's like not as many crowds in, and it's just, uh, I keep telling myself I'm going to splurge big for the 50th and stay at Boardwalk, but we'll see if that actually occurs. (laughs) Hey, man, we keep saying we're going to splurge and stay at the Poly, so. Yeah. (laughs) One of these days. Yeah, (laughs) one of these days. So with that said, I guess we should probably take a walk. Um, Oh, do we want to do these opening remarks? I totally missed the the other ones. Oh, no. I mean, we could just... Throw that. Oh, I put the fun facts at the end, and we okay. can throw the kid cot somewhere in between, probably. Okay. Um, so, with that great debate decided, I guess we should start at the Mexico Pavilion and talk about that a little bit, maybe. This is my absolute favorite pavilion at World Showcase. Really? It's probably my it is. number I... two. Really? It's up there I just, for me. I l- Sorry. <laughs> oh, I love the architecture here. Um, I think there's some really good food options, really good drink options, too. It's kind of got a little bit of everything in my book. Mm-hmm. And there's an attraction, too. So, I mean, like, it, it hits all the boxes. Yeah, that definitely helps. <laughs> Not a very good attraction, but uh, hey, it's there. It, it, but it is an attraction. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I think the one thing that, that Grand Fiesta Tour really has going for it and like as a whole with the Mexico Pavilion, like not one thing in the Mexico Pavilion is absolutely stand out to me, I think, but all of them together make a really good pavilion. <laughs> right. I really like the architecture of like the pyramid. I don't know why. It's just so iconic. Yeah. It really is. I guess I'll throw my fun fact in here on that. Um, the whole theming of the pavilion is actually a combination of three different ancient Mexican cultures, the Maya, Aztecs, and Toltecs. And so with the pyramid, they made the exterior of the pyramid modeled after the Aztec temple of Quetzalcoatl. Uh, the interior is... Archi- or it's Mayan architecture and then a lot of the art and decor within it are Toltec so the Imagineers I think did a really cool job blending all those into one like cohesive theming that's a really interesting theme that you see a lot through World Showcase I found out in looking up a couple little things for this is that with the tiny space that they have the Imagineers were like oh let's throw as much in here as we can but make it all blend together really really well mm-hmm and I think that's one thing that I really like about this this pavilion is that, you know, Mexico has all this, you know, it, very ancient culture, but then it's also got like a really rich, like modern culture too. And I think they do a really good job of putting all of that in there. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, I really love the interior of this pavilion. Um, one like fun little thing that I learned is the reason it's designed to look like dusk is because in Mexican culture, that's when friends and family get together to spend time. Oh. And I thought that was really neat. That, that is really neat. I love watching the glass blower in there, too. It's just everything's so pretty. It's very cool. All of the little, the like, the wood carvings, too, are very, very cool to see. There, It's, I don't know, this is one that, I, I mean, every time I go to Epcot, I stop in most of the pavilions, but... I for sure take extra time to stop in Mexico. I guess I've never mm. really realized how much time we do spend here because I'm thinking about it now. And I, I love the way that the inside of this pavilion is laid out in terms of like the marketplace area, which is weird because I've complained about that before on the show. Like there's something about that section where all of the little pieces come together to make like that little marketplace. That's really nice while at the same time feeling very crowded. <laughs> it definitely does not handle large crowds very well. Oh, yeah. So let's see. So do we want to talk about some of the stuff that's actually in the uh, um, the inside of the pavilion while we're here? We could talk about... Um, is the margarita stand? The margarita stand is outside, so we actually skipped that. Yes. Because the line's um, always first... so long now, you gotta <laughs> skip it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I honestly don't know if I've ever stopped here. Okay, so they used to have these little, they're called like chicharrones, which is actually supposed to be like pork skins, like, or as we in the South like call them pork rinds. Um, they would serve the guacamole <laughs> with them, but they weren't actually pork. They were just fried flour, but they had like the same texture and like crunch to them. And they were really good. It would, like the whole thing was either vegetarian or vegan, but I used to eat it all the time. But now hmm. they just serve it with plain old tortilla chips. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But Bummer. the guac is still good. So that's what counts, I guess. It was just nice to have something unique. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that is kind of the whole point of going to World Showcase is that you're getting all these different countries like cultures and food and drink options and stuff. I hate that they kind of like, you know, didn't keep it traditional. Yeah. And that's Disney for you. <laughs> quick, trying to make a quick buck. We but, have nice things. <laughs> segue into our next point, though, is that if you see that Chosa de Margarita has a really long line, uh, the cantina has pretty good margaritas too. Yes. I don't think I've ever the eaten can. at the cantina. Oh, the cantina it's... is... If you want Mexican food in the Mexico pavilion you should definitely go to the cantina because it is way better than San Angel and I'm I'm assuming you wrote this in here Brian yes a hundred percent agree with that sentiment and it's so bizarre because it's it's on the outside and I feel like there is sometimes a line here but definitely not as like in demand as San Angel is. I guess San Angel has the atmosphere, so more people want that, but like mm -hmm. no, this is this is where you want to go. Now, and one thing that I don't know because I've never been to La Hacienda, but I know that like, you know, they share almost the same building. I wonder are they is like some of is it the same kitchen? I I know they have like similar like you know, plate meals, but I don't know if they offer that at La Hacienda. And I'm wondering if that's why the cantina is so much better than the San Angel Inn. Uh, hmm. I don't know. That is a very good question. I can't imagine that they don't share the same kitchen. We obviously can't really talk about La Hacienda since none of us have eaten there. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I've never really had the desire to eat there. Not because I've I mean, I have heard that the food is not good, so that's definitely a deterrent, but mostly just because it's, like, everybody's staring at you and taking pictures in front of you, like, because they want the background, and, like, it's so loud, and I don't know. It just doesn't seem like appealing atmosphere for a restaurant to me. Yeah. 
just seems too like open spaces. I don't know. I weirdly enough, I I know I've never eaten in here or eaten the like off the the menu in here, but I remember one time we were there. La Hacienda was closed, but they were using it as overflow seating for the cantina. And we ended up sitting in, like, off of one of the, like, uh, the lagoon view window things while we ate our, like, our, our lunch from the, the cantina. And that was really nice. So that's about the extent of my Hacienda <laughs> experience. <laughs> oh. So do we want to head inside to the, the Mexico Pavilion back again and talk about some of the stuff that's in there? Because I think we missed a couple things. So we didn't really talk about La Cava, which I've mentioned before, one of my favorite places to get a drink in World Showcase. I know tequila is not <laughs> everyone's thing, <laughs> but I think that you should definitely at least try this place once because the people that work there are very knowledgeable. And if you say, hey, I don't really know what I like, they're pretty good about like trying to recommend stuff for you based on other things that you like, which I absolutely think is a very good quality to have as a bartender. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Are they, do they make they the have, margaritas from scratch? Like in front of you there? I feel I've had, like I've gone there a couple of times, but I feel like I wasn't paying attention. Or if they're all pre-made. I honestly don't know either. Because I feel like the ones that I've had have tasted kind of pre-made, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I feel like the ones that I've had have been pre-made, but I usually don't go in there for a margarita. Well, you just take like straight shot of tequila? Like a uh, hardcore? The couple times I've been in... <laughs> <laughs> the couple times I've been in there, I had a tequila flight the one time. Which was enough. I was done after that. Do you sip oh, it? Man, that's a sa savage move. No, I well, I shared it with. But someone, you like? But did you? Uh, it's like a shot of each tequila, and you take half, and the other person takes half. Yeah, it was. Oh, okay, I was about like to say a, tequila is not a sipping drink. No, 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 no. It was definitely <laughs> like <laughs> unless you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a couple other like they actually have drinks in there too, but. I know I did get a margarita from there once. I don't remember if it was pre-made or not, unfortunately. I th the only... I th I've definitely had the horchata margarita there, and it was okay. It was pretty good. Um, it just kind of tasted like if you ate a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch, and then you drank the milk afterward. Okay, but is that a bad thing? <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing at all. It just was It didn't taste very strong, but I felt like I could feel it. So that's like the ideal drink, honestly. Yeah. But it was like, it was very creamy, which is, you got to get it before you start really drinking. Because creamy after you've already been drinking is never a good idea. Right. So I'm I'm looking at their their menu now, and it looks like a lot of them, it looks like they make their. Maybe they like make it there, and then they put it in a big container or something. So it's like pre-made, but not yeah i've had know. okay so i'm looking at this now and i'm remembering what i had um i had the avocado margarita one time which that was interesting i've wanted to try it was it bad i liked it i remember this one because i got this on my 21st birthday and my friends still make fun of me for it because they hated it i really enjoyed it i love um, avocados is it like thick it's not it, it's got a, a lot of other stuff in there, but I think it's like an avocado base. It looks Did like it taste got, like it? Like I, avocado? That was, that was like five years ago. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I'm going to um, have to try it. I love avocados. I liked it from what I remember. But yeah, and then they have flights and stuff. They have frozen drinks. They have, they have a lot of Dos stuff. Equis. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I don't if you know. really want, <laughs> if you really do, want to get actually. a beer beer from a tequila place, go for it. <laughs> I mean, there's also sangria on here, which that might not be too bad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um. So yeah. So moving out of there, that would bring us into 
uh, the little marketplace, which we kind of talked about a little bit. Um, do we want to talk about Grand Fiesta Tour? I feel like we have to talk about Grand Fiesta Tour if we're in Mexico. Definitely have to talk about it. Do we? <laughs> There's two <laughs> different fine. types of responses to that. It's, I mean, I think that it's, it's not an e-ticket attraction. Nobody thinks it's an e-ticket attraction, but I think it's a really cute little extra to have in there. And I love, again, even though it's not like a super fantastic attraction, I love how it, it just blends with the entirety of the pavilion. I mean, the right takes you through the little river where you're kind of like wrap around the restaurant and everything too. And I don't know, it just, it feels so continuous with the rest of the pavilion. And I think that's why I like it so much. Not just for the ride. Yeah. I do think this is a fun attraction. Like it's, like you said, it's, it's not an e-ticket. Nobody should expect it to be an e-ticket, but it's a nice little boat ride. And there are some parts that are charming mm-hmm. and some parts that could use an update but for what it's worth it's definitely a nice way to get out of the heat i think maybe i just i feel like i hate on it more than i used to after seeing the way that pirates is set up at disneyland because it's like the same concept it's a restaurant and you like take the boat like around part of it before you get on the like before the attraction actually starts and they just did it so much better there (laughs) <laughs> I just think of how it could be and how it's not. I don't know. It may be in the future. We never know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get a cocoa ride and yes, it'll be so much let's better. Let's do that. I would like that a lot. You know what I realized is not on our list that we have not talked about in Mexico. Hmm. We I mean barely barely talked about uh San Angel Inn and I think we need to circle back to that one. <laughs> Has anybody eaten there fairly recently? I've never eaten uh, there. I ate there probably five years ago. Oh, gosh. So Maybe I'm longer. the one that's eaten there most recently. <laughs> uh, I don't hate this, but when there's better options around, I think that you're better suited to eat other places in World Showcase. That's the positive way to spin that. Um mm. Mm -hmm. We ate there last trip, I think. I can't remember how we ended up with that reservation. Um, But everything on their menu is super, super spicy. Like, I'm normally pretty okay with spicy food. This was, like, way too spicy. (laughs) Mm. I had tacos, and it felt like I was eating, like, jalapenos that's how spicy it was. I, I don't even know. I don't think there was in mine, but they were, it was, it was so much that I didn't actually finish dinner. I remember that much. Um, now I do remember that this used to actually be like a place that we would eat at a lot when I would go with my mom's whole family. And I remember really liking it. I just remember recently I did not like this at all. <laughs> Maybe they spiced <laughs> it up in recent years. Maybe. But that's that's my take on San Angel, and I'm not going to rag on it too much more. I think it's fine if this is what you're looking for, but like we said before, there's better options in the Mexico Pavilion and all around the Mexico Pavilion. <laughs> I think the reason, one of the other reasons that I've never eaten here is, well, one, because the only table service restaurant I've ever eaten at in World Showcase is Via Napoli because pizza... I just feel like I want to snack a bunch. I want to try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Mexican food sits really heavy in your stomach. And also, if I'm eating Mexican, I want it to be, like, completely drenched in cheese and sauce. And, like, that is not good for a day at Epcot. So, especially if you're walking around in the sun drinking a bunch of alcohol. So, I feel like I've never been able to rationalize it. And I, I will say, out of all of the places that I know I've eaten in World Showcase, this was probably by far the heaviest food that I've eaten in World Showcase, too. So you're 100% right on that. Yeah, you know, it's like I, I love Mexican food, but it does not always love me back. <laughs> <laughs> 
So do we want to move on to Norway or was there anything else we wanted to touch on in uh, the Mexico Pavilion? Oh, yeah. So um, talking about the pyramid, bouncing back to the exterior, the controls for illuminations are apparently up there, which is apparently the main reason that Disney was freaking out so bad when there was that gl- guy that was trying to climb up it. Which I thought was an interesting. Oh, he didn't little try. Fact. Well, the guy that climbed <laughs> he up did it. it. <laughs> Legendary guy. <laughs> and my fun fact to go along with that is that because of that guy climbing up the pyramid, that large slab that's like <laughs> almost looks kind of shoehorn at the entrance to the to the actual pavilion uh, was put there so that the steps didn't go all the way down to discourage other people from climbing up like he did. Oh, boy. Never forget the Mexico climber. Well, hey, I guess (laughs) that uh, has worked out for them so far. (laughs) Preventing people Mm -hmm. from climbing up. I have not seen it happen again. (laughs) So, if we're leaving Mexico, that would head us into Norway, which... The very divisive World Showcase Pavilion. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. I actually really love Norway. I think it's it's a, fine. A nice, it's definitely nice not my place. least favorite. I'll <clears throat> tell you that. Oh, that's absolutely true. Um, mm-hmm. Where do we want to start on our adventure in Norway? I think the only place we really can't go would be like Frozen Ever After because everywhere else is pretty like front and center. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty small, so we could kind of just let's just go hit wherever. it and go. Um, yeah, let's go to the best place first, which is Kringle Bakery. And if you're not in here to get a school bread, you're doing it wrong. Just oh, did I tell there. you I had one finally? How was it? It was fine. There should have definitely been a lot more creamy stuff. I. Okay, I completely agree with that. The one I got was like kind of dry, and I've only ever had one. <laughs> I That's can the only one that. I've had. If it had more creamy stuff, I feel like I would have a higher regard for it. But it was weird at the same time. I didn't hate it, but it had a very weird flavor. It was like <laughs> it was like cinnamon, but also like a honey bun. All right, you know what you have to do. Pro tip here: you can get them in to go containers, and mm-hmm. you take them back to the room. And you put them in the fridge and let them get really cold and then eat them for breakfast the next morning. They're so much better cold. I feel like that would make it drier, really? though. It didn't. It actually made the cream, like, colder and better somehow. I don't know. I like them better cold. I hmm. That's not how Disney serves them. But <laughs> Well, was it supposed to be warm? I feel like mine was, like, room temperature. It, it's supposed to be, like, room temperature because it's a pastry. Okay. But what if you put it in the microwave? Mm, I don't know. That's an that's experiment a, that an someone's exper- going to have to yeah. do for us. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that next time and give it a shot. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut it in half. I'll microwave half and I'll put half in the fridge and I'll let you know which one I like better. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Is there anything else that you guys have ever had in here that you like? I'm trying to think of I what I might have had here. getting stuff from here. The, um, well, the last time that we were there... And I made Andy stop for as many school breads as I needed. She got this pretzel thing that was really good there. And I cannot remember what it was called. So I'm going to have to look up their menu now. Oh, it was called the Norwegian Kringle. <laughs> oh, there <It's> you a, <laughs> go. <laughs> it's a pretzel shaped pastry topped with assorted uh, assorted topping, cinnamon, almonds, or chocolate. I want to say she had the Ooh. chocolate and the almond one. That does sound good. Yeah, that was really good. I think that's like the school bread is is the big hit there that everybody knows about, but definitely don't sleep on the Norwegian Kringla. Hmm. They also have a uh, a alcoholic beverage called Viking Coffee there, which is just Bailey's and uh, coffee liqueur. <laughs> is there no actual coffee? I don't think so. It's literally just a glass of Bailey's and Kahlua, essentially. I think so. I've had this before, and I don't remember. It definitely tastes like coffee, but that could just be the coffee liqueur. 
Yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker, so this is not something that would be in my wheelhouse. But then again, I don't think there's an alcoholic beverage in the Norway pavilion that's in my wheelhouse, because the only <laughs> other thing I've ever had is the aqua vitae shot, and that was like hellfire in my lungs. <laughs> Do they still have it? Because, like, the last three times I've been to Epcot, I've stopped in Norway to try to find it and have never been able to find it. I feel like it was, when I had it, it was at that little little kiosk, not, like, in the bakery. Hmm. But I could Might be wrong. I have to take another, <clears throat> another peek next time I go. I want to say... Why? <laughs> Why would you want that? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like a rite of passage thing, right? Oh, so you're just you're gonna you're like gonna punish someone else with it is what you're saying. (laughs) That should definitely not be a rite of passage. (laughs) It's like the Beverly of Norway. I get it. Beverly of World Showcase, maybe. Apparently, it was still there in 2017. That's the last article I can find of someone reviewing it. I'm pretty sure I had it in at least in early 2018. When I went with my family. So I, I don't know why they would take it. I haven't seen anything that said it was removed, so I'd imagine it's still probably there. Yeah. So outside of Kringle Bakery, we've got um, the Royal Summer House, which is the Anna and Mel- Elsa meet and greet. Um, I don't think I've ever done this. <laughs> I'm also not done it either. Me either. Yeah. So moving on. So after <laughs> that, <laughs> um, we have Frozen Ever After. I guess we could talk about that and then talk about the restaurant that I can never pronounce. Uh, Acker, I think it's Accursious. <laughs> Reading it phonetically to it. me would say Accursious, but I could be wrong. So let's talk about Frozen Ever After first, and we'll come back around to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. It's a fun attraction. It's I feel cute. like that's, that's such a, like, cop-out. It's grown on me, I guess, the last few times I've ridden it. I don't know. I, I just had very strong, like, childhood ties, like, nostalgia towards Maelstrom, so... Me it's hard too. to not see it when you're on it, in a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's cute for what it is. I honestly, the reason, I think I think mm-hmm. the main reason that I talk as much smack as I do about Frozen Ever After is because it was, like, the beginning of the end as far as bringing, like, really hardcore bringing IPs into World Showcase. And now it's just, like, everywhere. It's like, oh, we're getting the Ratatouille ride. Oh, we're getting the, you know... Mary Poppins, Cherry Tree Lane. We're getting this, we're getting that. They're like making permanent structures to incorporate IPs. And it was that was like the pilot of version of that. I don't know. I think the biggest issue that I have with it, and I don't have a huge issue with it, but at least like the Ratatouille ride makes sense because that whole yeah. movie was like looking at French cuisine, which is a huge part of their culture, so that makes sense. And the fact that, like, Arendelle is not a real place, yeah, and they shoehorned it into a pavilion that's supposed to be representing a country's culture seemed really forced and not what World Showcase is about. It's just such a blatant cash grab. Like, a blatant attempt at, like, higher attendance. Yeah, and it's... It's mm-hmm. like you said, Brian, it's hard to say when the attraction or the movie was um, specifically like the culture was a part of that movie versus it was inspired by. And that's that's where it kind of gets to be that hard line of like doesn't necessarily fit in World Showcase, I don't think, is when it like it was inspired by rather than set in. Mm-hmm. Um, standouts of this this attraction, though, Olaf animatronics, fan animatronic. And I think that's pretty much my my two takeaways. I love those two things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, realistically, Olaf is the reason that Frozen is still a thing that I acknowledge. So I'll agree with that. 
I just think that the animatronic looks so good. Like, I'm not a fan of the projection mapped face things that they have going on. Even in Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, I'm not a big fan of it. But I think the Olaf animatronic looks really good in there. And it looks like he's right there with you, Mm -hmm. which is what I want. That's the kind of animatronic I want there. (laughs) So another food option we have... I. A a <laughs> the royal banquet yes, thank hall. you <laughs> um, there we go again i'm probably the only person that's eaten here right <laughs> i have not i have not been here so oh gosh we did this again last trip it's fine um <laughs> i Wow. The I, end. What a rave review. review for Mario. It's <laughs> fine. It's not. Put that on problem. a quote in a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, two stars. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't see. This is. I've had bad food at Disney. This isn't bad food, but this was not the food that I wanted. So. <laughs> I, it's I, it's I, all you can eat, right? Kind of. All, so excuse me. All you care to enjoy in Disney terms. So yes and no, because you actually order your dinner, like your your plate, but they have a um a salad like appetizer bar thing, um, which is not how I remembered it, but that's how it was the last time we were there. So this is character dining. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, when you come in, you check in with the the host, hostess. They take you in. You get a photo with Belle. That's the first person that you meet in the lineup of princesses that you're going to see throughout the night. And she's in her big yellow ball gown, I guess because she can't like fit through the tables in that thing. Um, <laughs> but then you go, you sit down. Your waiter or waitress will come over with the uh, like the the menus and everything. You order your dinner. And you order what you want to drink. Then you go up to the like the buffet thing that's there, and it's all like cold salad items and um, like little appetizer things. So it's not really. I guess you could do all you can eat there, but it's not something that I would think of when you think of the word "all you can eat" or "all you care to enjoy." So it's like you you have an entree that's like. A thing that's you get one of, but you can go to the salad bar as much as you want. Yeah, let me see if I can actually find a picture of this because it's it, it's like it's Ruby v- Tuesday. Yes, that's <laughs> actually probably the best thing that you can compare that to, and that's actually making it go lower down on my list. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's like Ruby Tuesday. Oh, Another I fine restaurant. Say, I do have to say, if you you're a big fan of like uh, interior design and like the theming inside, it's really pretty inside. But that's for the most part, I think all it's got going for it. Um, <laughs> the food was okay. It it's different, and I think as much as I I love World Showcase, I think if it's not the food that you're looking for and you're you're trying something new that could also hurt it a little bit um like i think that that was my biggest detriment was that i i wanted to try something new but this was definitely not what i was anticipating it to be um what is that salmon i think so they're like lunch meats cheeses shrimp it's like a build your own subway (laughs) 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 so if we don't talk about the character portion of it, I think that's that's doing it a little di- bit disservice because that is kind of where the big draw in here is, I think. With this being character dining, you pretty much get the full lineup of princesses besides Anna and Elsa. Um, sorry, I should say that like the main ones that most people are looking for, and they're all in their like actual princess lineup dresses. You have uh, Ariel, Aurora, Belle, Cinderella, and Snow White. They come around, except for Belle, who waits at the front in the little, like, alcove thing. And I always find that with character dining, being an adult, one that's really awkward. (laughs) I don't know if anybody else has that experience. Like, 
sitting are at the you table. saying that being an adult at character dining is awkward or you are yes. an awkward adult that did character dining. <laughs> your your wording was a little confusing. There. <laughs> I think a little of both because, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm laughing at myself now. Um, so I remember uh, this has happened to us a couple times because we used to do uh, Crystal Palace for the the breakfast buffet because it's all poo characters and they I feel like every time we would do a character dining option one of the, the characters at the head of the line would get stuck at a table and they would all just build up behind them so you're oh, sitting no. there waiting and then there's just like a rapid fire of characters that come through all the princesses <laughs> surrounding your table like sharks well, <laughs> That was the worst part because for us, what ended up happening was they didn't bring the check until, so, all right, I just realized I now have a little bit of a confession to make here because this was the night that we were supposed to meet Brian at Trader Sam's. (gasps) Oh my God, Brian. (laughs) They blew you off for princesses. No, no, no. We made it. We just ended up being really late. Oh my God. (laughs) So... When we did this, I I texted Brian. I was like, "Hey, we're we're sitting down at dinner. We should be no more than an hour or so in here because usually that's how long it takes." Well, all of our princesses got held up, and for some reason, they told us they wouldn't bring us the check till all of the princesses made their way around. (laughs) I don't know why, (laughs) but that's how it ended up happening. So we had to wait for the last one, and like when they all hit us in like rapid succession. We were finishing dessert, so like in half of the pictures, we're eating (laughs) in half of them. Uh, It's bad. Um, But yeah, we spent a lot of time in there that um, it it just, it took us a really long time to get out of dinner. And then when we ended up leaving, we got stuck on the monorail, but that's a whole other story I think I told here before. But yeah, it was fine. It, the dinner was okay. Um, All right, so it's fine. It's okay. I'm convinced. <laughs> uh, I know. Next I'm like hard selling this place. Uh, actually, if I'm being honest, I probably would not go back there again. So <laughs> that should tell you something. Um, but the fun fact that I had for Norway was that kind of like Mexico – the village in Norway is four different architectural styles. So they ended up blending them together. The four different eras of Norway history to make the one little pavilion that we have today, which would, you know, represent Norway. Nice. Cool. One thing before we leave Norway too, is I, I really enjoy the, the church museum out front. I, I think it gets passed by a lot, but I, I, I don't know. I really like it. And now that they've updated it and it's no longer just like frozen stuff in there, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah. I I like when they do the exhibits in the pavilions and they're, they're like a little bit reminiscent of like history things. Like they did a, um, a Viking gods exhibit in there a while ago and that was really cool. Yeah. I haven't been in there in a while. I'll have to check it out again on my next trip. So the next pavilion that we would head into would be China. Is this one of mine? I can't remember. Yes, it was. (laughs) Um, So I, this is one of my favorite pavilions. I think this is one of the, the best, like, in terms of the design and how it looks like I, I could wander this pavilion for a while, but, um, first thing that we have on here that we should talk about, which should be our circle vision film, which is reflections of China. Anybody, anybody seen done? it? <laughs> Not me. I haven't oh, in a yeah, long yeah, I've time. seen it. I, I like it. It's not my favorite of the circle vision theater shows in world showcase but it's cool i mean i 
I don't know. It, 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 you know, it's kind of just like a tour of all the stuff around China. I think if it wasn't Circle Vision, it would probably be pretty, pretty boring. But I think that kind of adds a nice little touch to it. I am excited about the updated one coming, though. Yeah. My biggest complaint with Circle Vision has always been the seams that you end up with and the fact that they said mm-hmm. that they're going to make them seamless. Just That's so exciting. Yeah. So Nine Dragons, that's the next thing on our list, which is the table service in China. Has anybody eaten here? I feel like I'm the only one that does table <laughs> service. <laughs> Yeah, yeah not I so me. very rarely eat table servers. I have not eaten here. I've eaten at uh, Lotus Blossom, but I have not eaten at Nine Dragons. I have also. Is that the little. No, no, that's not what I was thinking of. Never mind. Well, <laughs> Lotus Blossom is the quick service, which has the orange chicken. Oh, yeah, I have eaten there. Mm-hmm. The orange chicken is so it's good. good. This is like my. Uh, <clears throat> This is my quick service stop if I'm at the early stages of World Showcase and I want somewhere to grab like a snack at or like lunch at. This is where I'll go. Mm -hmm. Apparently they also have egg rolls there too and I did not know that. I've never had an egg roll from (laughs) Lotus Blossom. If I recall correctly, the portions are pretty big, right? They are actually. Yeah. I'm looking at the menu. I think I've had the stir fry. No, I've definitely had the orange chicken because that was the one thing that, like, I think I've actually had that a couple times now. Ooh, and the plum wine. That's good. Yeah. So, speaking of uh, drinks, the Joy of Tea is also in here, and that's where you would probably stop on your drinking around the world tour, I would assume. That's where I've stopped every time I've done it. (laughs) <laughs> which has the the signature drink that I think I've heard most people talk about the tipsy ducks in love. I was like, it's something about <laughs> ducks in love. <laughs> <laughs> has anybody had that? Cause I have not. Isn't it coffee based? No, I think so. Yes. Yeah. No, I don't, it's, like, uh, I don't like coffee. So it's bourbon, whiskey, coffee, black tea, cream, and chocolate syrup. That is a lot. <laughs> I, uh, every what a weird in mixture that except for the chocolate syrup. Ooh. If they took yeah. the coffee out, I would definitely give it a shot. <laughs> what what have you guys had from here? I think I have had I don't know if I've ever had anything. I think I've had the kung fu punch. Is that the red one? I think so. I think this is that... vodka and triple sec. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've had the Baijiu punch because it tasted odd. Like, lychee is like a weird tasting fruit, you know? Yeah. But then again, maybe it was the ritzy lychee that I had. <laughs> I don't know. I've had this is not really a can- usually a stop on my drinking, you know, itinerary. Yeah. Unless I'm actually drinking I've had the- around the world. <laughs> I've had the Canto Loopy before And that's just Vodka and cantaloupe juice That does not sound like it would cover the vodka Very well It surprisingly <laughs> does Yeah, I think it was more cantaloupe juice than it was vodka though Well Typical China pavilion <laughs> um, Watered down drinks I've never had the <laughs> bubble tea here But I do love bubble tea So I've been meaning to give that, that a is, shot. That is a phenomenon that I have not latched on to. I really like it. It's weird and good. I've had it once and it did not. I don't. I was not a huge fan. <laughs> you didn't like chewing on the tapioca pearls? <laughs> no. <laughs> I generally don't like having to eat stuff in my drinks, but <laughs> to each their own. Yeah, I've never, like I said, I've never had it here, but I would give it a shot. What is so, a creamy milk cap? That sounds disgusting, whatever it is. It says, it's lychee iced a- tea, creamy milk cap, and a hint of Himalayan salt. Huh. Okay, now I need to know what a milk cap is. 
So while you look that up, I guess we should talk about the Mulan meet and greet and the acrobats that are here, because I think we can cover both of those. Um, uh-uh. I am not about this I, if this is really what it looks like. Oh, God. It what says it? milk cap is a common name that refers to a, to mushroom forming fungi. Are they saying they put mushrooms Ooh. in this tea, y'all? <laughs> I am not Man, here that. for it. No, thank you. Next. <laughs> All right, so now we can really move on to the Mulan yes. meet and greet and the acrobats. <laughs> I never want to think about that again. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever actually met Mulan here, but I've definitely seen the acrobats. Yes, same. <laughs> Those acrobats are super cool. All of the World Showcase cool. Streetmosphere is awesome, and this mm -hmm. is no exception. I think this is probably my favorite Streetmosphere act really? in World Showcase. Yes. That's hard. I, now, I like a lot of the other ones, too, for sure, but I don't know. These people are insanely talented. Yeah. I'll give you that. I would put Sergio up there yeah. on my list, but I don't know. This is this is pretty close. So we made it through three of the countries. Uh, we're pushing just over an hour now. Did you guys want to run through Germany or do we want to save that for another episode? I think Maybe Germany's we... got enough in it that we'll spend some time on I it. I think so. Yeah. Maybe this might have to be... It's going to be like three, three episodes. Yeah, because <laughs> there's a lot of countries there, you know. Yeah, so we can come back to this. And, I mean, we've got some stuff we can fill out um, for the next couple of weeks with, with this anyway. Yeah. Then that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Station 71 podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can find us on one of our many social medias at facebook.com backslash Station 71 pod, Twitter at Station 71 pod, Instagram at Station 71 podcast, and you can send your emails to Station 71 podcast at gmail.com where we will be happy to address your questions, comments, concerns on the show. If you want to join our community over at Discord, you can join us at bit.ly backslash s71chat. We hope you enjoyed your ride, and we'll see you real soon. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.